Hey guys, thanks for joining me. It's Grant with anglingauthority.com. Uh, if you clicked on this video, you're either interested or curious uh, or considering making your own baits. So for today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the basics or the bare minimum what you need to make your own soft plastics. <laughs> So let's get started. Uh, so for the purpose of this video, and remember guys, this is uh, just if someone who has zero equipment who wants to start making their own baits, what do they need? So I'm going to show you um, really basic uh, items. Uh, this is going to be just bare, bare bones to start. Uh, and what you do need to start, the first thing you need is uh, material. So what you can do is you can go purchase uh, fresh plastisol. Um, it's, we call it virgin plastisol uh, from an online supplier. Um, but for this video, because you just want to make some baits and you're starting off, what you can use is used plastics. Uh, used plastics are great for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, uh, it's free. You've already paid for it and you fished with it and it's already used up, uh, torn or um, it's caught a few fish for you and it's no good. Um, the other reason why using used plastics is great is because it's good for the environment. Instead of throwing it in the water or throwing it in the garbage, um, you can keep it in a baggie uh, in your boat or with you and when you get home, just sort the colors out. Uh, I have a couple of bins that I use. Um, so here you can see green pumpkin. Um, I've got like, you know, a bin for watermelon red flake. And what that does is that has, that's got just, you know, used plastics. And I've got another bin, uh, black with blue flake. So, yeah, so to start off making baits, really all you need is uh, used plastics. Um, you can um, talk to your friends, guys in your club, whatnot, and um, you can, you know, ask them for, you know, hey, can you save your plastics for me? Um, depends on how much you fish, you will accumulate them at different rates. And if you've got a couple of guys that are um, saving them for you, you'll get you'll get a, a supply much quicker. Uh, so yeah, so first thing you'll need is used plastics. Second thing you'll need is a way to melt them. Um, the quickest and easiest way is a microwave. Um, uh, you know, this particular microwave I got from a garage sale. You don't need to spend a lot on a microwave. Don't, I don't suggest buying a new one. You can probably find a microwave at a garage sale um, on Kijiji or Craigslist, wherever. Just a used microwave. You might know somebody, a mother-in-law or, or you know your grandfather or whatever. That might have a used microwave, so just you just need a microwave. Um, doesn't have to be fancy, um, yeah. But you need a way to melt plastisol. The sec third thing you need, sorry, the third thing you need is a container. So when we talk about containers, uh, Pyrex, uh, definitely Pyrex is what you need. You don't need anything big. Uh, this is a two cup Pyrex. I've also got a one cup Pyrex that I use. Um, pretty simple stuff, not rocket science, cheap, find, you can find them anywhere. Uh, the next thing you'll need is a couple of small utensils, so I just use like an old knife, um, got a couple of them here, uh, spoons, you don't need anything uh, fancy to stir. Um, 
The next thing you'll need, depending on whether you intend on injecting or whether you intend on doing open pour, is going to be uh, uh, an injector. Um, I prefer to inject, um, so that's what I did. I went and sourced myself out an injector. Um, the one I got, I got from um, Jan's Net Craft. Uh, it's you know less than a hundred bucks. Uh, mine came with an extra nozzle, and it actually came with a couple of extra, a couple of extra O-rings. So not a not a huge investment. Uh, very simple to do. The next thing you'll need is molds. Uh, there's a lot of different kinds of molds, and probably discussing all the types of molds that you can get would be another video in itself. But just know that you need something to form the, your material uh, once you've got it melted uh, to the point where you need to pour it. Uh, so what I'm going to be using for this video is uh, basically a cast aluminum mold. So this one here is pretty interesting here. That's the beaver bug from Do It Mold. So that's what I'm going to be using for my uh, demonstration. Uh, but just remember, you need something to mold it. You can make your own molds. There's lots of options online. Um, but just know that you need something to pour your melted plastisol into. Right, so we've got our mold. We've got our injection tool. We've got our, our um, microwave. We've got our Pyrex. We've got something to stir. We've got our used baits. Um, you'll also need a C-clamp to clamp your mold shut and you'll obviously need a workspace. Uh, but one of the most important things you'll need is PPE or personal protective equipment. So um, Plastisol, uh, the melting point of Plastisol is very high. It's something like you know um, 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 100, I think it's 170. 176 degrees Celsius, so it, it can burn you. It's it's very dangerous. Uh, what you'll need is a pair of uh, gloves. Um, you'll also need to make sure you're dressed appropriately, so uh, no shorts. You'll need to wear a long sleeve shirt um, and pants, uh, shoes. Uh, I don't recommend wearing sandals in case you spill it, and also. Um, what you'll need is a respirator. Um, so not a particulate mask. So there's those drywall, ma uh, drywall dust masks, not those. You need something that can remove uh, vapors from the air. Um, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to be wearing it just because I need to talk, but I will be, have my PPE on. Um, if you have somewhere that you can work that's well ventilated, I definitely suggest that. Opening a window is also a great idea to get fresh air in. Um, those are a few things that you want to do. So what I basically do is I take my material, I chop it up into little bits, put it in my Pyrex. Um, put the uh, used material aside and I start my heating procedures. Now for this particular microwave um, I put it on a minute. Um, I usually lower the power. Um, this microwave starts at power 10 which is really high so I adjust the power level. I usually heat it one minute at power level 7. The reason why and you'll see online there's a lot of um, on the forums and stuff a lot of people say power 10 for the first minute but that power 10, um, I feel like it gives it too much heat and it melts, it actually, I think it burns the plastisol in my opinion. So, my PPE on. At this point what I do is I prep my uh, mold. So. Okay, I got my mold ready. I've got my injector ready. So after the first minute, 
um, what you'll see is your material will pretty much not be melted. Um, you might see a little bit of melting on the bottom, but it's pretty much not nothing. You'll, it'll just look. It'll just be warm. Um, what you want to do is you want to just give it a quick stir. The idea is you you want it to melt as uniformly as possible. So if you don't stir it and you just set it in again, even though the microwave rotates, the plastisol is you'll have areas of the plastisol that are going to be really superheated, and you'll have other areas that are not heated at all. So you want to give it a quick stir. You want to get it going again. Again, I lower it to power seven just because, um, like I said, I don't want it to have very hot spots. So it's my second minute. You can see, you can see it's starting to get a little bit. Let's give it a quick stir. Yeah, you can see it's starting to get a little bit mushy. You see how it's melting? Starting, just starting to melt. Which is a good thing. So we're gonna put it in again. Oh. Oh, that's melted already. So you see, we want to make sure we melt, we, we stir it up, get that melt nice and even. One of the things to really remember when you're remelting used plastics is you want to bring them up to temperature slowly. A lot of uh, forums suggest using power 10 for the first minute. That's a good strategy with virgin plastisol. With plastisol that's already been cooked once, you want to make sure you bring it up to temperature a lot more gently than you would um, new plastisol. The reason is, plastisol can only be reheated so many times before it starts to break down. So you want to make sure that you're not being too harsh on plastisol. I mean, that that's already been used. I mean, I've remelted uh, plastics, you know, four or five times already. But every time, it gets more delicate, and you want to be more careful with your plastisol. Some melting going on. So that looks good. Give it another hit. notice that your plastisol starts to get more and more liquidy. You want to make sure you just keep nursing it. Uh, the material on the walls, you want to make sure you're getting that down because what will happen is as your microwave goes, that will burn and you don't want that to burn. So let's try to keep this sucker and you want to stir it so it's melting evenly. Okay, let's give it another, another 30 seconds. Six. So it's almost ready. You can see how it's it's got a little bit of chunk still. We're gonna give it another hit. I'm just gonna give it another hit. So if you had a uh, thermometer, you could uh, check the temperature. 
But again, we're making this with the bare minimum. So you can usually go by eye. Uh, it's a little bit. So we're going to give it a low power. We don't want to burn it now. So I'm going to go 30 seconds at power three. So I'm going to get my mold ready. Again, so I basically, there's my mold. It's a three, it's a four and a half inch beaver. Okay, it's a two piece, two piece aluminum cast mold. So I'm gonna clamp it shut. Okay. I've got my plunger. Um, so what I do is I, I've got my plunger all the way closed and what, what I'll do is I'll show you the procedure. So how I do this is I, I put this right here, I go like this, suck in the plastisol, inject. So I push down firmly and I inject until I feel resistance. Once I feel resistance I let up and I put a little bit of plastisol on top and then I evacuate whatever's left. Move this aside. So now I've got Plastisol in my plunger. Um, if I push a little bit harder, it'll push up my nozzle and then I'll have like a slag. So there you go. I let that cool for a few minutes. Plunger's ready for your reuse. I'll put on my next nozzle for my next shoot and that's ready to go. This is pretty easy. This is why I, one of the reasons why I chose an injector is you basically take this and just pull it off and that can get remelted later. And this is ready to use again. So I just set that aside. Um, with, with a um, injection mold, it's pretty cool because, um, so what you want to do is you see that there, see how it, you want to you want to allow you want to put a little bit extra into the um, I guess it's the 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 nozzle or whatever you call it what happens is as the plastisol cools it will uh, contract and you want to have material up here so that as it contracts it can suck that material in and you don't have any voids basically in your um, in your bait. So we'll let that cool. Um, one of the things that you need to do also is keep your Plastisol kind of warm. Uh, now, if you've done any research online, you'll know um, a lot of guys, a lot of guys use um, hot plates. I don't use a hot plate. Um, you don't really need one. I mean, I just put it in the microwave I keep it warm, so I basically run the microwave at power one and just keep it. Uh... Once your mold is cool, it only takes about a few minutes. You can open your mold. There's your beaver. Just pull that off. And there's your product. This can get trimmed off. So you'll take your scissors. You can just trim that off. This can get remelted. And there's your there's your finished product right there. Okay, so the last step, uh, once you remove your baits from their um, molds, um, you got to set them on a, a table or a tray or a plate, anything you want to use so that they uh, can cool off and harden. Uh, when you set your baits to cool off, make sure you set them straight like that. If you set them crooked like, like that, what happens is they will harden like that and you'll end up with a, a curved bait. Um, this is especially important when you're, um, you know, 
pouring swim baits or anything that needs to run true. Um, you don't want them crooked because then you'll end up with them um, continuously trying to go to the left or the right. Um, the next thing to do after they've cooled, obviously trim them. So you've got the ones here that I've uh, poured in there uh, in the video. Uh, basically take a pair of scissors, trim off the excess. Uh, this can go back in the bag for remelting at a later date. Um, and then once you've got them like that ready to go, you want to bag them. So I've got, I basically what I do is I, I keep my old bags from my baits. So I just take an old bag. Uh, this is a BPS. Uh, it's from a hump and toad. I just take an old bag, uh, put a couple of drops of either uh, worm oil or uh, scent. Um, worm oil keeps them moist and doesn't allow them to dry out. And obviously scent is, is scent, so it, it makes them more attractive to the bass. Um, so yeah, just put them in a bag, a couple of drops of uh, worm oil and scent, end up with, with a product like this. And that's pretty much ready for the uh, tackle bag or the boat or wherever, and you can just pull them out and use them. That there is ready to go. Guys, I really appreciate the support and thanks for the view. Um, hit that like button if you like what you see. Um, also, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run like a little bit of a contest uh, two, from two weeks after the date this video was posted. So I figure what I'm going to do is um, if you leave a comment, uh, it means you want to be entered. Um, and for one person, one lucky person is going to receive a couple bags of these baits. I guess I'll do like a, maybe a bag of black and a bag of green pumpkin or whatever. Um, yeah, so leave a comment and I'll choose a, a winner within two weeks of the uh, video being posted on YouTube. And if you want to get a couple of bags of baits, um, yeah, enter.